What is up, everybody? My name is Waresberry. Welcome to Theory Chat, the weekly show where we dissect the latest Resident Evil news, info, and theories. As we anxiously await the release of Resident Evil 2 Remake! I'm your host, Where's Barry? You guys are the Zoms, and together, as the Crimson Army, we will solve all the mysteries of Resident Evil. Make sure that you guys let me know if you can hear me and if the music is too loud, because I can no longer do that. I am feeling kind of excited right now. I've got this whole RPD set up. We've got a great show coming up here so let me know in the chat we're gonna do a lot of emojis on this show so right now let me know how you're feeling in the chat with emojis and when we'll add that up on the screen we'll check that out today on the show we are going to talk about the new news articles that came out this week there were two different ones we're gonna talk about ratings and game sales kinda boring we'll go through that quick We're going to talk about how far along they are on Resident Evil 2 Remake. We're going to talk about the Famitsu magazine. We're going to talk about some new images that we saw. We're going to talk about that crazy, insane keyboard that you guys have probably seen as well. Uh, Upcoming Resident Evil 2 events that you guys need to be aware of. And much, much more. So I see everybody jumping into the chat. 56 watching right now. Thank you guys. For checking out the show, this is one of my favorite parts of doing this channel. And let's check in and see what you guys are feeling in emojis. Gonzalo's got some hard faces, show me your doodles happy. Jojo's got some glasses on, so does Wicked Chris. Tristan's got a whole bunch of faces going on. And let's get started with the show, guys. Welcome to Theory Chat. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and chime in with your thoughts in the chat. As you guys can see, the chat is a lot of fun. Everybody's having a great time right now. And let us make sure that you're following on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all week long because that's where all the content comes from from this show that's where we're gonna get all the comments you'll see later in the show people's comments from Twitter Instagram Facebook all pop up on the screen as well as the videos that I do where's Barry B.com will take you to those and before we get started we gotta have a shout out to the Zom squad because they are the sponsors slash members that help the channel survive Uh, if you want to be a part of this this is YouTube sponsorships Click the link in the description. Let's see some of those emojis to the Zom Squad that's already in here. And we've got a whole crew of people. And if you do consider joining the Zom Squad, I thank you for your support. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about today is an article from GameIndustry.biz. And it's another one of those boring developer interviews. But every time there's a boring developer interview, actually they're not, well, I guess they count as developers. Uh, There's always little quotes that somebody will pick out and pull up, and it's gonna, and this one was no different. So uh, all the links to everything we do today is in the description, or should be in the description. So these are the two guys from Capcom Europe, and they were the ones doing interviewed, and they... uh, we're giving out these quotes, and you know they're very professional when these are the only two photos of them that exist. Uh, so here's the, qu- the first quote that we covered and everybody was covering, and it has to do with fixed camera versus the third person over the shoulder that they chose. So just word for word, we played around with a few things in development. We did try first person. We did try fixed camera. But the way the game has been designed we decided that a third person view works better. So one of the things that 
you may have heard is that from these people who do videos and YouTube stuff and Twitter stuff that where they don't read articles or they don't know how to you know read English or they don't get it. Uh, it didn't say fixed camera sucked. It didn't say first person sucked. It said they tried those two in the in the beginning, I'm guessing, and that third person works better. So that's the quote. Don't get it twisted from the other people out on there. Uh, but let me know in the chat what you guys think about the fact that they did try the other ones and they think that third person works better. Are you guys happy that they would do such a thing? Basically, to sum up some of their other quotes, they said the world has changed. So that's kind of like technology has changed, so the camera view kind of changed. Um, they also said that they thought fans might, like they thought we might think we want tank controls and fixed cameras, but then when we played it and got it, we'd be like, oh, this sucks. It's like Resident Evil 2, the original. So that's kind of where they were thinking as well. Uh, and they were very worried about dividing the fan base from the camera angle. Um, but we kind of knew they weren't going to do first person. Uh, we actually on this channel knew that they were doing third person for like a year. But who else has inside sources like this channel? Nobody! Uh, and in the end they said they were happy with the reaction from the fans. Um, but, you know, fans are always going to complain. Uh, a certain amount of them, some will like it, some won't uh, right away. But they said that the pre-orders are good so far. Uh, and then here's a, a quote from, or a comment from someone on Instagram. This is from It's T Huts. Uh, These would make awesome unlockable options after finishing the game and give it crazy replay value. So I thought that quote was, or that comment was great, and it's going to lead into some of the stuff we're going to talk about later. But let's see what you guys are saying. Roland says, old school, modern twist. Torn Normal says, people are accusing Capcom of not caring about the old school. Nick Graham says, I don't mind third person. I wish fixed camera was an option. And Day Player says, hard to see why fixed camera mode can't be an option. Whoopsies. Uh, so, yeah, you guys... I think I think we're gonna like the third person over the shoulder. If we want the old school feel, we can go back and play the old old version. Uh, but it's it's pretty. It's not really even. This isn't really news that's on the slide right now because, of course, they thought about the different camera. Van it doesn't even tell you how much they made. So you see this and you think, oh, they made the whole demo in first person and fixed camera and tried it and. They could have just thought about it. Or they say that we tried. I don't know what even that means. Maybe just in art or something. Uh, but yeah. So here's the other quote from the same article. Um, in some, and this kind of talks about. This is basically talking about Resident Evil Six and Seven, but talking about where they're going for with remake and the games in the future. Uh, it says, in some respects, getting some very good review scores counts as much for Capcom as a game that sells millions and millions and millions. We'd prefer a game, we Capcom would prefer a game, that got a 9 out of 10 and sold less than one that got a 6 but sold more. Uh, so what do you guys think about that strategy do you think Capcom is being sincere, or do you think they're just kind of saying that because of this next fact, that Resident Evil 6 kind of destroyed Resident Evil 7 in sales. However, the rating for Resident Evil 7 was more closer to 90 or 9 out of 10, like they said, and Resident Evil 6's score was closer to 60. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, rating systems online to see this, but... Actually, IGN, you'll never believe this, but they rated Resident Evil 6 higher than Resident Evil 7. And this number, that's 7 million, actually, if you include the new PS4 and everything, uh, Resident Evil 6 has sold over 10 million. And Resident Evil 7 is still at 5.1. That's a new figure that just came out a couple, or a couple days ago or something. Um... But Capcom said that they care more about long-term sales than day one sales. And 
when Resident Evil came out, it sold three million, but it's been selling all year long, mostly because of discounts, but a little bit because of uh, word of mouth, the new DLC stuff, uh, and just the fact that it. I think it's a good game, and people have heard that, and then they want to try it when it gets cheaper to, to try it. So that's the numbers. Uh, and I've got a little. Uh, well, let's go check out what you guys are saying in the chat. Uh, this news is two days old. This, it, Well, it's not news, but it's probably like seven days old. I'm pretty sure I tweeted it on Monday. So if you guys want the latest news, I will always have that. But obviously, we don't do this show live every time news comes out. Um, I don't know. You guys are still talking about fixed angles, so we will screw you guys. Just kidding. Um, so this, here's the chart here, right up here. Which, if you were Capcom talking about remaking uh, new games, which one of these games would you remake next? Which one would it be? There's no titles here. These are the amounts, the original sold on the, on the, um, on the edge. And those are the game names so if you decided that you were gonna remake the one two three four five six seven eighth most popular game that or eighth most sold game ever you would be remaking resident evil 3 so when you guys think when you heard that remake news last week that resident evil 3 they're definitely remaking it next take a look at this and see if you were running a business would you rather remake Resident Evil 3 that is way at the bottom of Resident Evil games or would you want to remake like another game like 4 which I just played today and yes it's not super bad graphics but for PS5 that would be a perfect time for that kind of remake. But we won't talk about this, we talked about this last week but I just wanted to show you guys the sales again and how just looking at it without seeing a game title how far down Resident Evil 3 might be. And Michelle says it doesn't need a remake. It does need a remake for PS5. It's not... The graphics are really not great. And the controls are really not great. And there's a brand new engine. Uh, and here's a quote from somebody on Twitter. You can follow me at B. Good mentality to have. Obviously, if it doesn't meet expectations, it doesn't mean it hasn't turned a profit. And that's another true thing. Uh, they still might make money on these games that don't sell as much as they thought. The other big thing that came out this past week was the Famitsu Magazine August Edition where they had a huge spread on Resident Evil 2. And it's really annoying when these come out because they're in Japanese and I can't read Japanese. So we have to count on people like CVX Freak and Aesthetic Gamer. Anytime anything in Japan comes out, I'll be talking to those guys. They usually post it, I'll ask questions to them, but follow them as well on Twitter. They are the Japanese kind of source where you're gonna get the good information on Famitsu and stuff like that. And uh, that was one of our videos this week, our first video was the major news update and we'll talk about that now, but if you wanna see any of the videos from the week, they're all in the description. Uh, the first piece of news to come out of that is that the game is close to 100% complete. Uh, this never really bothered me before. I guess the only way it would bother you if it looked like they were running behind. And if they were running behind, they would probably not announce it. But I remember every time they would say Resident Evil 7 is 30% complete. Like someone would tweet, like everyone would go crazy on Twitter. But... Uh, the game is close to 100% complete, according to Capcom, <laughs> uh, which is good. Um, and here's something interesting that I found out. I didn't really realize this, but Resident Evil 6 actually was released early. Uh, they claim that it was released, it was only released like a month early, even, maybe even like 15 days early or two weeks early. But that's because... Or, or they say it's because the fans deserved it or something like that. But really, I think somebody stole a copy in Poland or something. And then the game actually was out there and people were able to buy it online or something uh, before the game actually released. So I believe they released it early to combat that. And uh, a lot of you would say, well, the game's 100% complete. Why don't we... 
why don't they release the game early? I don't think that's part of their strategy because what they said about their marketing strategy is they want to release things in January. They did that with Monster Hunter. They did it with Resident Evil 7. And the reason they want to do that is because it gives them less risk. So if you, re I guess if you release something Christmas and it fails, like everyone hates you, but in January, if you ever think about the movies too, everything comes out before January and January is usually like no good movies. That's changed recently uh, with some different ones, but usually all the movies come out because of the Oscars before that. But so Resident Evil wants to position themselves not as a major developer. They want to, they think they're a boutique developer or a small scale developer. I don't really buy that, but that's part of the reason why they want to release things in January. It's all their marketing, everything like that. So I think so. And somebody said in the comments, well, why haven't we seen Claire if it's 100% complete? Because we have several, several months left. And there's no need to prematurely blow your own... I don't know. I'm not going to finish that. Uh, the, the game is going to have knives in it. And knife-only runs will be possible, according to the article in Famitsu. Uh, how many of you guys in the chat have ever done a knife-only run? I remember I've only done it once in Resident Evil Remake. I believe you have to do that to get the Platinum Trophy. And they let you do it on very easy difficulty. So I have done it once on very easy difficulty. And surprisingly, Tyrant at the end of the game was a lot easier than you would uh, think it was. Uh, but... The knife, this is some footage from uh, Maximilian Dude. He played the demo, uh, just to kind of show you how the knife works out here. Um, you know, it, it does a good job at killing the enemies. And then uh, it's also going to be something that breaks. And there are multiple knives in the game, but they said it doesn't matter. You should be able to finish it anyway with the knife. Uh, Bluke Draith says the knife belongs in the inventory box. I 100% agree. Every Resident Evil game I've ever played, I throw the knife in the box as soon as possible to get it out of inventory. And in this game, the knife does take up inventory space. It's not like Resident Evil 4 where it's just like a side item. It was Resident Evil 4? I don't know. Whatever game had the knife as the punch button. But... Uh, it will take up inventory space, there will be multiple knives, and the knife will have health, and it will break, and Biohazard France played the game, and they demonstrated the knife breaking. It wasn't anything worth showing, because it's just like swing, 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 and the health of the knife goes down, and then Leon just goes, looks at the knife, and then it's gone. That's it. He doesn't throw it or anything, it just kind of ends. Uh, the article also talked about speedrunning and said the randomness will be minimized to make the game more speedrunner friendly. I don't know that they did this on purpose or if it was just a side effect, uh, but that's kind of weird to talk about speedrunning a game six months before it comes out and that speedrunning might have gone actually into the design of it. Uh, it's a little weird, but... Some people have seen this and they th they said, well, if speedrunning is good for it, then maybe the game's going to be five seconds long. I think uh, Travis said that. I see you in the comments there. I'm pretty sure that was a Travis quote from uh, one of the videos. But Resident Evil 7 on Madhouse mode was my fifth playthrough or something, so I already knew what to do. It took me 17 hours. Uh, Jigsaw Killer, who's one of the best players ever and it has the real world record there's just a fake world record on speedrun.com but he has the real world record he can beat madhouse in under two hours so speedrunners can do stuff that regular people can't do in a actual 13 to, i think resident evil 7 is a 13 to 17 hour game for the first per time through and speedrunners can do that in like two hours so i don't think it means the game's shorter it's just speedrunner friendly. And if the game was 30 hours, you can still speedrun a 30 hour game. It doesn't, like, speedrun doesn't mean you finish the game in two minutes. It means you finish the game as fast as possible in the game. So, a Final Fantasy VII could be speedrunner friendly if they took out the random battles or whatever. Uh, and it would still take a long time to beat. Actually, I don't know. There's probably some kind of shortcut in Final Fantasy VII. But this is a Resident Evil channel, so. Uh, they said. <laughs> 
This is funny too. They said it would be Hollywood style visuals different from the realism of Resident Evil 7. So they were saying Resident Evil 7 was a more realistic uh, game, whereas here they're kind of going for a Hollywood style. The, this is the, the quote that was like, what? Because you've seen in the demo, it looks pretty realistic. Uh, it looks very dark. It, it kind of... But I guess the idea is kind of the... If you've seen the concept art where it's like purples and pinks and all sorts of colors. Just kind of a little bit of a stylized, almost like Resident Evil 2 style look. Uh, the cover of Resident Evil 2 with the, the two characters shooting the guns opposite ways looks like a cartoon. That's kind of the style I guess they're going for. Like a... Like a... I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but I haven't noticed it really in the demo. Has anybody else noticed it? Uh, Tor Normal says, is this going to be slightly campy? I think Resident Evils are all slightly campy. They're going to put in stupid jokes, uh, things like that. I think that's just the style of Resident Evil. It's like horror movies are good, like Cabin in the Woods and Get Out. Those were two of the best horror movies recently. And it's because they had comedy in them. And I think Resident Evil tries to have a little bit of lighthearted humor and comedy in the games. Even Resident Evil 7, that was supposed to be realistic. Kind of, ja I mean, Jack Baker was like comedy 101 right there. Um, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, when we're doing the live show, I can't just read every single chat, so I have to see what's up on screen. Uh, they said there's going to be more realistic puzzles, which um, sounds good in theory. I don't know that a secret underground passage under a goddess statue is really a realistic puzzle, but uh, I think what they were saying basically is, I think in the article they used an example. If you guys remember in Resident Evil 3, there's a part where you unlock something or you put like a... You put like a plate on a statue and it pulls the arm down and a battery is in the base of the statue. And it's like, in real life, how? why would a battery be hidden in a statue? Like, why wouldn't it be in a car? So I think this means that they'll be, if that was the puzzle in this game, they would hide the battery in a car and you'd have to find, you'd find the battery in a car to use it in the elevator. You know, something crazy like that. And welcome to everybody who's joining the Crimson Army. We are almost at 20,000 zombs. So if you guys are enjoying the show, 125 people watching, make sure you click like and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you know when we're doing it. But this show will always be Sunday night at 8 p.m. until we move it to 9 p.m., which might happen in the future. Uh, and they want to stay true to the puzzles of Resident Evil 2 while they're making them realistic. So they can't just like throw out every puzzle from the old game. And we've seen that so far in the demo where they're using these medallions. In Resident Evil 2 Original, we found the unicorn medallion. It went in the statue in my RPD back here and it gave us some key. And in the new one, there's three medallions. You find them all, you put them in the statue just like this. And that will open up the basement door. So that's, again, I don't think that's super realistic, but that's kind of a cool haunted house style puzzle. Uh, but the big thing, the biggest thing from the article, and that's why I saved it right for the middle of the show when the most people were here, is this. They said that they would be adding something new. So the word is something. So we that word we can interpret that as a game mode as you know whatever we want to interpret that as, but something new to increase replayability. They also mentioned in this statement that they were not talking about Force Survivor with Hunk and Tofu. That's already going to be in the game. That's not this. This is some new surprise they want to give us later or something. So this is the big one that you guys need to tell me in the in the uh, comments right now what you think this could possibly be or what you would want it to be. Distant Memory says Extreme Battle. And we'll go over some of your stuff here after we go through some of the quotes or comments from, I keep calling them quotes, comments from my video that I did. Uh, Brandon said he personally hoped to see Ada get her own campaign. Uh, Wolf, said, uh, Wolf said Fix Camera Angle Mode. Giovanni said Battle Royale mode. That would be like Fortnite. Uh, Desert Fox said Mercenary mode and wants to see infinite ammo on New Game Plus. That's another thing we can talk about is the New Game Plus and what they'll have. 
Uh, and Joe said, how about a first person mode? So let's pop on to the chat and see what you guys are talking about. Mr. Doodle says, Ada mode. Rosewick says, a randomization mechanic like RE3. Also, the new Resident Evil uh, randomizer mode everybody's been playing. HR Zone said, Sherry mode. Michelle says, Ada are mercenaries. Wow, this one's got the chat is going out of control. Uh, Carol says, no first person. Uh, what was the other one? Somebody had a good one today. I can't remember what it is. That's great for this sh TV show. Uh, hunt down all Mr. X's mode. Um, some uh, people in the comments also said maybe there would be... They want a mode where they're the enemy. So either they're Mr. X and they're chasing online players. I don't think that would work. They're Mr. X and they're just chasing other monsters and other characters. Uh, or Birkin, or like one of the enemies in the game. Uh, I heard, also heard somebody mention Nemesis mode, where Nemesis and Mr. X are both chasing you throughout the game somehow. Uh, Resident Evil fan says classic camera mode. Plumper says Birkin or Mr. X mode. Vicente says Resident Evil 3 as an add-on campaign. Uh, and if you guys that idea there we're gonna have a video coming up this week about resident evil 3 remake slash dlc or whatever they, they're gonna do with that so that's cool uh carol says realistic mode with scarce ammo and health that might be like the hard mode that they do if they have kind of a madhouse type mode uh bluke says deathmatch mode that would be interesting um and yeah in resident evil 2 the original game the bonus mode was called extreme bat was it called extreme battle mode that can't be the name of it, right? And you'd like go looking for three bu three or four bombs to disarm. Why would that be called battle mode? That's kind of weird. I don't know why they would call that battle mode. But anyway. Uh, and like I said, guys, wa watch all my videos that I do and comment. And then I will use them in the show just like this. And the more comments we get and the more the weeks go by, we'll figure out how to add your guys' comments in here more because I, it's hard for me to do the chat except for every couple minutes because the show would be boring for those watching on the replay. Uh, and this is the video I came out with today. We're gonna go over, we're gonna do videos on different modes that could happen, but this was kind of the first one that I thought this is gonna be uh, an interesting one. And we'll talk about this next week, but go watch this video after the show and leave a comment on there and maybe we will use your comments in the next episode next Sunday night. Also in Famitsu Magazine was this new screenshot that is not a screenshot but probably an art piece and it was basically really confusing when it first came out because Famitsu mi mislabeled, the, uh, mislabeled the image so despite it even looked like art and everyone's like it looks like art but the guy who who read the Famitsu said it wasn't on there and when I saw the Famitsu it wasn't labeled that way either but anyway this has got to be art but it shows Claire it shows her where there's a liquor it looks like there what there's three liquors up there maybe one in the back like lined up and then one to the left there's a dark shadow and the reason that I love this picture is because I think it looks like a school and our best video so far for this time was zombie children in the school this was our best theory so far and when I saw this I immediately thought school because that's the kind of ceiling you'd see in a school and in the background it looks like desks and chairs are pushed up against the wall to stop the zombies from invading and this kind of looks like a hall where there's lockers you can't really see the sides but it's a wide hallway schools have wider hallways so you can get to the lockers uh, so that's every re all the reasons I think that this theory video, link in the description. If this one comes true, that would be great. In Resident Evil 7, our best theory, our number one theory video was that the uh, Baker House was made by George Trevor. Check. And for uh, the DLC, our theory was that Jack Baker was still alive in End of Zoe. Check. If you haven't played it, sorry for the spoiler. But uh, somebody in the in uh, in the chat mentioned. Uh, hospital would be another thing that would have a ceiling like this and could look like this those could be gurneys uh, in the corner 
and uh, it, there's one thing is it just it does not look like the RPD so that's kind of the main thing here and it's got Claire and we haven't seen Claire and the reason we think we haven't seen Claire the reason I think we haven't seen Claire is because they're hiding the new levels and they don't mind showing us where Leon is because it's a classic thing and the original like when they announced it they're like nostalgia 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 and then when they release the Claire stuff it's gonna be like new game new game new game new game and then it's going to all come together like it's nostalgia plus a new game and everyone's going to love it. So I think that's kind of their marketing here. And we'll talk about when we might see the Claire stuff come out at the end of the show. Uh, what else do you guys think about this image here? Somebody pointed out Claire's uh, gun is in her left hand. Again, this is an art piece, I believe, so... It doesn't necessarily even mean that this is going to be in the game. But, maybe. Uh, this is another screenshot. I know you guys were talking about fixed camera mode as a possible bonus mode. Uh, here's another shot of a fi of a what looks to be like a fixed camera angle. But I'm pretty sure this is just like a design, another art thing that shows that they did in concept. Because this is the uh, the lounge room in the in the RPD from the demo, but it looks different in the puzzles. Definitely, this is definitely I, I think a drawing, a drawing, a drawing. Uh, so I'm not getting too excited about that, but we might have a cool video coming up this week on stuff like that. Uh, here's another screenshot that's the same. It's not behind his shoulder. Uh, this one is also from a Famitsu magazine. Uh, and this is the one that's like, boom, right in your face. Like, whoa, that's weird. But again, it could be just a marketing photo. Uh, and then here's another new photo that came out. These actually came out a while ago, but nobody's really shared them except for me. And, uh, here you can see he's, Leon is outside. And there's a stairway. And if you watched last week's episode or follow me on Twitter, you've seen the map of the RPD if you want. If you don't want to see what it is, don't look at it. But we showed you the, in Resident Evil 2, the original, there was the courtyard outside. It's like a little square one that leads up to the hallway where Nemesis is. And then there's another stairway leading down to the helipad. So this could be one of those areas, which is, uh, you know, it's not a surprise because we were expecting them to be in the game. But it's, this is the first look at that. Um, oh, I guess we're already at the keyboard, huh? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen this. This is the latest Capcom um, piece of merchandise for Resident Evil 2. And what it is, is a keyboard for your computer that looks like a typewriter. And I saw this and I said, oh my god, it's so awesome. Capcom is so good at making cool stuff. Uh, $730 Bluetooth keyboard. You can watch our brief two-minute video on it as well. It's got a retro design. It's got a typewriter bar that does volume. It's USB chargeable. It's Bluetooth. You can put your iPad in it. Uh... It says comfortable hit feeling. I don't think it's going to make the noise like a real typewriter. Uh, and it does not work for PS4, but here's the thing. After I did that video, two minutes, that two minute video, I see this. This video right here, somebody sent me. And I said, wait a minute, that, that keyboard right there, that looks kind of familiar. Uh, how, much to, how much could this possibly cost? I don't know, it's got to be $700 if the uh, other keyboard's $730. Um, no, $250 keyboard. Capcom is taking an umbrella logo. They're sticking it on there. They're sticking the Lexington logo on there. And they are selling it for a 200%, almost 200% markup. Just so that it has the umbrella thing on there. So, 
If you guys thought that keyboard was cool in the first place, I would suggest getting the $250 one, although that's a lot of money for a keyboard that's probably not good for gaming. Uh, and one of the tweets we got from Camaro Z28 SS 98 Demon, who's not here right now, was he had he bought a pair of shooting glasses that were, had the BSAA logo on them, and then found out later they were actually eighty dollar glasses, and he paid two eighty for them because it had the logo. So, so that's uh, that's that thing there so i suggested to everyone just go to amazon buy umbrella stickers for four dollars and buy the 250 dollars one um, now some other items like would be cooler if they like if there was a pair of socks they would be worth 50 cents and you put an umbrella logo on them oh now they're cool socks now i'll pay 20 dollars for them but this is different this is just like a typewriter thing uh david that is the yeah i just showed that keyboard uh, and then this is the other item that they released, and it's part of their Japanese Collector's Edition. They're doing all these bundles. Uh, that's why you've, you may have seen that that keyboard was $1,000. That's not the case. That includes the game and the Collector's Edition. So I wanted to show you guys what the keyboard costs, because why would you guys need to buy the Collector's Edition from Japan? You would already have that. And then if you wanted the keyboard, you could get it for $750 or $250 plus $399 for a sticker. Uh, and it might look different than that when they make it, but I doubt it. Uh, but these ink ribbon things look cool, but they're just uh, tape. So I guess I don't know what you would do with tape like this. Just tape things on your wall that says keep out. or It looks like the designs are based on Resident Evil 2 Remake. And then this is the cool th screenshot. And I don't actually have them all up now. Maybe I can... Maybe I can pull it up here. But this picture is cool. It's got Leon. He's looking at a computer. It's got a report from uh, e Elliot Edward. It's just like a regular note from the game. It's nothing like no spoilers or secrets. Uh, and his gun's on the table. I zoomed in. It's his Matilda gun from RE2. So, And then they threw the keyboard in there as a marketing image. But this picture right here is just meme central. Um, and I'll show you my favorite one so far. This was tweeted by the guy in the beginning. We talked about CVX Freak. Uh, but if you go online, there's all sorts of memes with this now. Because he's like creepy looking over his shoulder. And you know that people are just going to put all sorts of crazy images in that screen. I think we even used it. Was that the intro screen when I opened this? Or maybe it's the screen in my thumbnail. Uh, but this picture is awesome. And it's so memeable. It is so memeable. So go online, check out these memes. They're great. Someone should compile them all. Hey, Barry, you have a channel. Why don't you compile them all? Oh, good idea. Maybe I'll do that. I don't think so. It's kind of boring to me. But somebody should compile them all. But yeah, that video, unbelievable. Um, so let, let I guess I'll ask you guys, who's buying this typewriter? Let's look at the chat. Is anybody buying the typewriter? I don't I see no, 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 no. So yeah, I don't think that you guys are gonna be buying that. But uh, also that we learned, this is, again, it's not super relevant, but the uh, Japanese collector's edition came out and it's the same as ours, except they get like a CD instead of a digital music. Uh, and then there's going to be a European edition. Everyone was thinking, well, there'd be a Claire figure in one of them, but no, it's. I'm pretty sure European edition is going to be the same thing. I don't think there's going to be a Claire statue. I don't think they made one, but that's just kind of to show you that. And another thing we have to talk about, because people like on YouTube, they just want to, they just want views all the time. This is like irrelevant news to people in the United States. It's relevant to only people in Japan. Why do we? Why are United States people doing video? I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to say that. And then maybe somebody that's my friend did a video, so t I take that back. But I didn't do a video on this because Japan was getting a special version of the game, and it's actually not a special version. This is the real way it works, right here. Uh, U.S. version not censored. Japan version that they call regular is fully censor censored 
and their uncensored version, which in this case they call Z version, is actually more censored than the United States. And the Resident Evil 7 had the same thing, where their two versions were more censored, and I watched some of the censored version, Mia me, me getting her hand chopped off, or chopping off his hand, it, they cut it, and just screen goes to black, and his hand remains on his body. Uh, the cop that gets hit in the shovel, he gets hit in the back of the head, but you don't see anything. His face doesn't split. Uh, and there's other changes. And the reason that I watch that is because, as I said earlier, Jigsaw um, Killa on Twitch, who's a speedrunner in the Madhouse Mode record holder, was finally beaten by somebody on Madhouse Mode. And I said, this is impossible. How did the person beat it? I watched it for the first few minutes and I saw they were playing the censored version where they cut out some of the cutscenes. So it's a shorter game. It's cheating. It's cheating. But I guess it counts. I guess Japanese versions count as speedrunning things. So he finally got beat, but it's BS. Uh, and it's like this. And I got this, again, this information was from Alex CVX Freak in Resident Evil 7. He mentioned how the regular version of, or the grotesque version in Japan was actually more censored. So, uh, and then there's some more merchandise. Again, this is all Japan stuff, so it's not great for us. I'm pretty sure almost everything is sold out. All those Leon jackets are already sold out. They cost like 300 to $500. Everything is a million dollars that Capcom sells. And none of us can afford it. And then if you had to ship it from Japan, they'd probably add $100 to that cost or something. So, kind of sucks. So that's the end of our show today. We covered some of the quotes from the people that make the game. The Famitsu Magazine. We had a new image. We talked about the keyboard. We talked about some Japanese stuff. So what do you guys think? Do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Let us talk about different fun Resident Evil topics. Next week, we will have this show on Sunday as well, and we'll cover all the news that comes this week. So make sure you're following on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as we break stories all week long. And we'll cover the next topics at that time. So let's see. Uh... And uh, like I said, I just saw someone talking about the Z version is the one we get. During Resident Evil 7, the grotesque version was actually slightly more edited than the US version, according to Alex. Liquor mode, Roland says a liquor mode. What would that be? You're the liquor and you kill people? Or there's just every enemy's liquor? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus says, is Ethan an umbrella scientist? We already have that video. It's a great video. And it might turn out to be true in Resident Evil 8. Uh, they should make Let Me Live or Made in Heaven decals. Um, I'll show you guys another. Let me show you guys something else while we're here. Um, let's see here. And you see, uh, scrolling through Twitter, this is the best Twitter account that of Resident Evil online, and there's no debating it. Better than Resident Evil's account itself, currently at this moment. But uh, this uh, girl here, she does an Etsy store, and she makes Resident Evil items. So you should go check out my Twitter. Her name's BikeAngel777. Her link is not in the description, so you'll have to go to my Twitter. But she makes things like the Umbrella Viruses. She does these maps. Uh, she made the necklace that Claire wears in the game, which is kind of cool. And uh, she made a first aid spray. Different items. I think she made some new stuff this week, but just wanted to let you guys know that you can get some interesting stuff from a fan. Whereas Capcom selling a, a, a typewriter they, they bought, bought for like 50 bucks. They probably bought it for like 20 bucks. Added a logo and sold it for 760 this girl actually spends her hard time, her time, and effort making cool Resident Evil stuff, and does not sell them for a thousand dollars. Sells them for probably re I actually don't know what they sell for, but I'm assuming reasonable prices. So when you think about 
uh, supporting different people. Think about supporting some of the fans that make cool stuff as well. Uh, and everything else we talked about last week, the maps. Uh, this is the only other thing I debated about adding to this video here. And that is, they just, they ha also have a new drawing of the samurai edge weapons that you can get if you pre-order the game, Jill and Chris's. And somebody had a hilarious comment. Uh, I think that's the same gun. But I don't know the differences between all the different guns and stuff, but... Uh, if they did a Resident Evil 3, uh, Nick says, can we get a Resident Evil 3 DLC? I think if they did that, it would either replace a remake or maybe just give, like, give us an idea of what it would look like. Uh, as for the length of a game, people were starting rumors about how long the game is. Same thing happened during Resident Evil 7. Uh, just people are like, I heard it was 20 hours long. It's just fake, fake, fake everything. If you ever need to know if something's real or fake, ask me on Twitter. I will find out for you. I probably already know the answer. And I can I trace it back to the source, so I'm not just like, that's fake. I find out who said it, then I talk to them or find out where they heard it from. And it always ends up to, they never have a link to show me. They, they don't have a name to show me. I heard it somewhere, but I forgot. Like, there's never any evidence of what they, the fake things that come out say. And Roland says, ask Barry, never read it. Yes, Reddit is hilarious, because that all the stuff we covered in this, uh, in this show today, uh, that guy, Aesthetic Gamer, also known as Dust Golem, he posted on Reddit. And I'm looking at the things, and he's got 23 votes for his thing, a brand new screenshot of Claire and a liquor, or not screenshot, image. And he's got 23 votes and then like somebody else has 500 votes and it's a uh it's a fake it's fake it's claire gameplay gonna is confirmed to be a comic-con which was fake and that got like 500 come on reddit do better reddit and reddit people and resident evil fans do better and no resident evil 3 remake is not confirmed i think we talked about that last week but i've seen all these thumbnails Resident Evil 3 confirmed. No, it's not. And we went over the the sales price and different reasons why it might not be even done ever. But I really hope Resident Evil 3 uh, comes out. Um, all right. So to end the show, let's talk about what's coming up next and where we want to watch and what dates we want to be ready and this channel here does live streams, shows just like this whenever there's a big conference that Capcom is going to be involved in. So the next one is coming up here in the next couple weeks. It's called GamesCon. It's like E3. It's like all those uh, games conferences, but this one takes place in Europe this year. It's in Germany, August 21 through 25. During the Resident Evil 7 release, this is where we got the Lantern demo gameplay trailer. We didn't actually get the demo, but it got played there by people. Uh, and we got a bunch of new screenshots and stuff like that. I'd expect similar things for Resident Evil 2 Remake. I believe we'll be getting some new stuff. I can't tell you which stuff. I don't know if it's going to be like a Claire trailer or demo. I don't think so, but maybe a Claire trailer. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, but stay t stay on this channel. Turn on notifications. We're going to be covering when the conferences are. Social media, I'll post it as well. You know, what day. Like, this is just the dates. We'll find out exactly when Capcom's going to be on stage. And for all these events, I'm going to have the date August 21st. That's like the day before it starts, really. And that's when they actually released a lot of stuff for Resident Evil 7. The day before, like when they came in. To kind of get the buzz going, so... Before, like August 20, August 21, get ready for some stuff possibly. But the bigger show is going to be the Tokyo Game Show, September 19 through 23, and that's going to be lots of Resident Evil 2 stuff. I think at that point they might release the demo. 
maybe not. I hope if they do release the demo, it doesn't get released for PC. Sorry, PC people, because I don't want uh, the other people to go into your PC thing and find all the secrets that they did in Resident Evil 7. They claim that they didn't put it in there in Resident Evil 7, and then everyone found out the ending to the freaking game when the demo came out. But this is going to be the big one here, and stay, uh, make sure you're watching this channel for that Tokyo Game Show, because that's in Japan, and that's the main Capcom thingamajig. Um, so thank you for watching. Be sure to follow on social media. Where's Barry B? Check out all my videos. We did another one today that released before the show started. We're going to be doing videos all week about some of these possible game modes and different theories. Uh, we, anytime news comes out, we typically do a video. But, I mean, my Twitter is just... It's news and photoshops and cool stuff all day, all night, long... Uh, and remember, if you guys enjoyed the show and you enjoy the live streams that we do and the content, consider joining up to the Zom Squad. It costs $4.99 a month. It's just the YouTube sponsorships, and you get to do cool things like use cool remake emojis and stuff like that. Uh, and be sure that you always comment on everything I do, and we will try to put you guys in this show. So my time is up. Thank you all for watching. You guys are the best. You guys are the reasons this thing worked. We had over 125 people watching the show tonight. We'll be back next Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The show lasts 50 minutes to an hour, and I will try to implement new things each week. I believe this was the best show that we had so far in terms of the presentation and everything working, but there's still new things I want to add. If you have any feedback on the show and how it's run, when this video gets posted later, go in the comments, say, you didn't put chat on the screen enough, you put chat on the screen too much, uh, you didn't have enough video, you know, give me some feedback on there. Uh, and if you guys are... Um, the other thing I did this week was I donated $30 of the swear jar to Wounded Warriors through Biohazard TV's marathon uh, and 100% of that went to the cause. Usually people are like pulling out parts so that you can use their website or whatever but this was straight through Google straight through there. So we'll be donating to things throughout the year with the swear jar. So I don't like to curse but sometimes I accidentally do. So thank you guys for watching. I love you all. And by Amanda. Go tell Go tell Go tell that our old gray goose is dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Welcome to the family, son. Come join the Crimson Army where the residents are evil now. Nah, we won't harm you. You'll get videos of theories and let's plays. Where's Barry Hill? Have something to say. Here's Barry Hill play all day. He's never really crunched for time. <laughs> a Jill sandwich comes to mind, but that's just one of those lines you'll find in the comments. A heart of gold, keeping the count. Number of deaths, a high amount. Will Barry live? Come find out on the next screen stream. We'll figure it out. It's the Zombs together, whether Jack is a dope boy or he wants to play. The Zombs are here to stay, even if number seven gets delayed. The data mine, the spoilers will make a change. Cause in our mind, we're very king. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And by Amanda, you're out of time. Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And by Amanda, you're out of time. Like, oh my god. By Amanda, you're out of time.